Hello everyone, this is Anushri and this is Medha and we on behalf of the Beaming Notes team can't thank you enough for your overwhelming support over the past few years. It is because of your love and appreciation that we have been able to launch our very own YouTube channel. And we need your support this time as well. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button and show us some love. And now, let's head over to the video. Hey everybody, welcome to Beaming Notes. And today we're going to look at the critical analysis of the poem After Blenheim by Robert Saudi. Critical analysis. After Blenheim by Robert Saudi is based on the most famous battle of the Spanish succession, popularly known as the Battle of Blenheim. It is an anti-war poem in form of a ballad in which two children seek information from their grandfather about a skull they found in the field. The grandfather tells him about the war that resulted in destruction of several houses, civilian casualties, rotting corpses and inhumanity. Robert Saudi attempts to highlight the ignorance of thousands of ordinary men who refuse to accept the cruel and brutal reality of war and instead consider it as a dignified and glorious act. In this poem too, the grandfather refers to the war repeatedly as a famous victory and a great victory but is unable to tell the reason behind the cause of war. The repetitions of the refrain, a great victory and a famous victory has been used to emphasize on the sheer ignorance of common men regarding the cause of the war and the damaging consequences of it. They acknowledge war only by its victory. It is through a conversation between Caspar and his grandchildren that the poem starts. One of the children informs his grandfather that he has found something large and round on the field to which his grandfather remarks that it is a skull and there are many more to be found. There are instances that run throughout the poem to support the main ideas of tragic end of war and the vulnerability of human life. The poem after Blenheim makes us ponder over the purpose and result of a war and questions its validity. War always comes paired with catastrophe and destruction. Caspar's gruesome descriptions of the war which is followed by his casual utterances form an effect of irony. It is ironic that it was a great war, but no one knows why. In the meaningless outbursts of war heroes, the unawareness of the futility of war and the inability to comprehend the scathing horror of the outcome is detected in the minds of the common people. The characters are introduced in the poem in the very beginning. We come across an elderly farmer named Caspar who is sitting in front of his cottage watching his grandchildren, Wilhelmine and Peterkin, play on the lush green field on a summer evening. When the children inquires about the cause of the war, Caspar replies that the significance of the war was in the victory that the English routed the French that the later generations would call a great and famous victory. Caspar also informs him boastfully that there are a number of skulls to be found on the field that belong to the poor fellows who died while fighting in the war. The great victory refers to the victory in the battle which also happens to be an example of patriotism as well as ignorance. However, Caspar is at a loss to explain the cause of the battle. Caspar knew that the fields were filled with dead bodies of the soldiers. He knew about the destruction of life and property, the death of the newborn babies. However, according to him, such things are all a part of the war and they do not negate the glory of the victory, which is why when Willemin says that the battle must be a wicked thing, Caspar tells her she is wrong. It was a famous victory, he says. In the following stanzas, we see the poet depicting the terror of war. After the battle was over, thousands of dead bodies of soldiers lay rotting in the field in indignity. There are sound effects in this stanza and they are generally held by the assonance of shocking and rotting and the sense of alliteration in the first line. These together give a greater resonance to the horrific image of death. The scene of rotting reduces dead men to carrion. They say it was a shocking sight after the field was won, for many thousand bodies here lay rotting in the sun. The poet has employed a number of poetic devices in the poem like alliteration, repetition and irony. Throughout the poem, Caspar regards the war as a glorious victory. The readers come across Caspar praising the Duke and the Prince for defeating the French army. 
and the prince for defeating the French army and for bringing glory and pride to the nation, thus creating more confusion and dilemma in the children's mind. The children are unable to grasp the essence of the so-called glory in a war that their grandfather is singing praises about. It is through the innocence of the children that the disapproval and the pointlessness of the war is presented. Caspar seems to hide all the destruction and agony caused by the war by repeating that it was a great victory. He seems to be afraid of breaking the romantic notions of war that are influenced by the people around him who idealize war without realizing the damage that comes with it. And these romantic ideals of war are what he also wants to put in the minds of the grandchildren. War to him was a greater good even though came at the cost of death and destruction. We again come across a line, but it was famous victory. The war was fought over a trivial dispute, but it did cause the lives of thousands of soldiers. It was fought near the village of Blenheim in Bavaria, on the left bank of the river Danube, on August 13, 1704. The English and Austrians under the Duke of Marlborough and the Prince Eugene defeated the French and Bavarians under the Marshal Tallard and Marsin. The only thing that is undeniable in a war is that destruction of life and property is sure to take place. Victory cannot bring back all the lives which were lost during the war. That is why the poet questions the effectiveness and the need of war. Thus, the poem after Blenheim successfully depicts the poet's message that war is something which must be avoided as all it brings is more destruction and dissatisfaction in this cruel world. Poetic Devices Alliteration It is a close repetition of consonant sounds, usually in the beginning of the words. Southey uses alliteration to enhance the rhythm of the poem. For instance, Now tell us what was all about, young Peterkin he cries, and little Wilhelmine looks up with wonder-waiting eyes. Now tell us all about the war and what they fought each other for. Irony Irony is a statement or expression whose intended meaning is quite the contrary to the literal meaning. Situational irony occurs when something opposite to what's intended happens. It is ironical that the old man glorifies war by stating the outcome as a great victory for a nation at the core of such ravages and destruction. The poet uses irony in the lines when old Casper says, but it was a famous victory and it was a great victory, but he does not know why. I could not well make out, and why that I cannot tell. No victory can come out of such civilian casualties and destroyed properties. The poet uses the terms like famous victory to enhance a sense of irony by emphasizing on people's ignorance of the pointlessness of the war. Metonymy Metonymy is a figure of speech in which a thing or concept is referred to by something that is closely associated with it. For instance, in the line, and by him sported on the green, green refers to the grassland. The poet associates green with grassland as grass is green in color. Archaism Archaism is the use of archaic or obsolete words which are presently not in use anymore. For instance, nay, nay, my little girl, quoth he. Repetition There's a repetition of the phrase, but things like that you know must be. After a famous victory at the end of 8th and ninth stanza in order to emphasize on the ignorance of old Caspar regarding the futility of war and his description of it as a famous victory. Theme Meaninglessness of War In literature, war has been often associated with meaningless glory and pride. This romantic idea of war is shattered by Robert Southey in this poem as he attempts to capture the ignorance of men about the negative effects of war in the lives and properties of human beings. War represents the worst form of human behavior that is man's cruelty to man. The skull that Peterkin finds in the field, as well as the corpses, adds up to present the horrid aspect of war. The children are yet to be corrupted by the adult thinking of vain pride at the cost of damage, destruction and brutality and acknowledge war for what it actually represents. Men kill each other, burn down houses and destroy the spirit of humanity to achieve the pointless great victory. Caspar's boastfulness at the large and round skull and his outburst of praises for the war heroes intensify the tragic ignorance of men and the loss of harmony and unity. 
He accepts the loss of lives at the battlefield as the price that one has to pay for a famous victory. Curiosity of children and disinterestedness of adults. Children are always curious to know more. After finding the skull, Peterkin asks his grandfather what it is. Wilhelmine then asks Casper to describe the cause of the war. They readily show their enthusiasm to gather knowledge about the significance of the war. Casper, however, tells them about the war that took place in Blenheim. But he cannot explain the reason behind why the war took place, nor does he seem curious about the causes. All that matters to him is that England won a glorious victory for them. Form and Structure After Blenheim is written in form of a ballad that divided into 11 equal verses. A ballad is a long narrative poem that tells a story. Each stanza is composed of six lines and it is written in an iambic tetrameter. The poet has followed the rhyming scheme of A, B, C, B, D, D in all the stanzas except the second one. In the second stanza, the rhyming scheme becomes A, B, C, D, D, D. For example, in the first stanza, the second line rhymes with the fourth line and the last two lines rhyme with each other. It was summer evening, old Casper's work was done and he before his cottage door was sitting in the sun and by him sported on the green his little grandchild Wilhelmine. Again in the third stanza, by rhymes with sigh and he rhymes with victory. Old Casper took it from the boy who stood expectant by and then the old man shook his head and with a natural sigh, to some poor fellow skull, said he, who fell in the great victory. So, did you find the video helpful? If so, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and continue to encourage us more to deliver more such poem analysis and English language tips to help you to get set and ready for your examinations. All the best.